and then they got to the second island and you can tell us a little bit about what happened on the way but like they showed up and they were this way like had no purpose but like whatever it was and then all of a sudden they're over in that second spot and like this is how they are today just to kind of get a sense of how your work is transformational yeah so one client that that comes to mind because the way that i work is I am all about empowering my clients. And so even any energy work that we do, it's always coming through your higher self and your own source connection. I'm not in your field manipulating anything. It's guided by you. With your permission, I tune into your energy field and your higher self because I believe the higher self contains information related to anything, the ancestral programming, the emotion, like anything we need to know that's causing resistance. And so as far as the kind of essence active, I call them essence activations. And so it's really about what we talked about tuning into your highest expression of yourself. So dropping into the body, into the heart, setting the intention. And there's a process that I guide people through and creating sacred space and everything and tuning into that true choice, that essence of who you are at a soul level and dropping out of the mind and just allowing what wants to show up in starting there, because then we're starting from what actually is the truth rather than like a problem solving kind of energy. Because I mean, the energy work is going to happen. So then we just, we ask the higher self to bring up any resistance that's causing any blockages or, because I mean, these things again, can be in the form of the beliefs, the emotions. There's, you know, we love to label things as humans. To me, it's just energy, but you know, it kind of helps people put that into perspective. And so then we can actually do what I call it a change history and go back to the original seed point of any distortions, any things that were created, because we want to pull it out at the roots and not just trim off the branches, because if we're trimming off the leaves and the branches, it's can grow back, right? We want to pull it out at the root level, which oftentimes is at an identity level. So identity and structure is the framework for a lot of things that happen. And so if we're really working with these different personalities and aspects that may be like, well, no, it's not safe to do this, or I'm not worthy of love and working with those parts to really kind of unravel why and what's going on there at a deeper level so that we can integrate them back in with the whole, because we want that connection. It's like almost like a mono personality, like a oneness, again, that clear channel to higher self, this physical expression then having all these fragmented parts, because that is what will create, you know, two steps forward to two steps back. Because I don't believe there's anyone that wants to sabotage themselves. We hear a lot of people that say, don't self-sabotage. I don't believe that's what's going on. I think that what happens is the other parts come online and join the party. And then you may have this one part that's like, oh, I want this soulmate love. I'm so excited. Like I'm all in. And then you have this other part that's like, we're well, not worthy. You're just going to get left then, you know, it finds a way to, I mean, we all kind of know what happens in these situations. So just kind of to give a little bit of a kind of illustration on the way that that works. So I did have one of my clients, she was with me for a year and initially she had started out and she was in like big corporate America job stuff. Like she was kind of doing the thing and she left her job. It was funny, the parallels to with my story, but it just wasn't cutting it anymore. It was like, you know, I'm tired. I'm burnt out. I mean, because we haven't even gone into how this kind of stuff affects the physical body because the physical body is a manifestation of all the other energetics going on. And so her skin was breaking out. She was having eye issues. Like there was just all the things that were tied up in these patterns. And so throughout our time together, it was really one of getting to the place to where she was just like, no, like I am powerful and I do have the ability to choose. And she actually got to the point where through our healing sessions, like she, she didn't need me anymore. And that's literally my end goals. I never want, I don't want people to need me. I'm here as a guide, as a mentor, as someone I feel that I'm here to empower my clients. And it's like, I always say, take what resonates and leave the rest. I don't know it all. And I don't claim to know it all. And so, you know, you may get two things out of what I said today. You may get 20. It's perfect because it's your unique journey. And there may be something that activates something inside of you. And so it was such a beautiful journey with her throughout this year because her gifts as a healer started to come online as she started to trust herself. And it got to the point, she's like, 
yeah, I don't need sessions anymore. I'm like, I know you don't. (laughs) I'm like, this is so perfect. And so to me, that is when I feel like I have shown up in a way that, that that's how I choose to show up. I love that because I love assisting people. I love reminding them of their power. I love teaching them how to navigate their own intuition muscle because we all have our own little intuition muscle. And it's just about really learning to trust yourself again and going within. Because for me, I had been disconnected from myself for 26 years before I started this process. And so it was really just kind of building that relationship with myself and learning like, how does my energy type work? Like there are different tools such as human design and the gene keys that have all been a piece of the puzzle for me. So again, it goes back to that, you know, take what lights you up. I always say like, what is your highest 10 out of 10? And that is the thing. That is the thing. And that maybe is like the next step. Like maybe you come across someone to work with. Like I, one of my mentors is Dr. Kim DeRamo. Her work is just so beautiful and I didn't understand why some of the business things weren't working for me is because I'm not meant to do business in the old way. And she teaches business in this oneness, unity, consciousness template. And so I'm like, okay, that makes sense. So it's just kind of these little, you know, little breadcrumbs along the way that we get to take and and really just bring more of ourselves online. Because again, life is supposed to be beautiful and it's just... It can be a process, but <laughs> what, how do you spell the name of that mentor that you work with? That, that oh, looks at business Let in me, that unique way. Wow. Yeah. That's... It's she's such a beautiful soul. Like you can just it's Dr. Kim DeRamo. So her last name is D apostrophe E R A M O. And she was actually an, I believe she was an emergency room medical doctor, and things weren't resonating with her any longer. And so she ended up leaving and now she calls it conscious medicine. So she is all about the energy word and all of that. And obviously with her knowledge of being a doctor, like it just adds a whole nother level and layer to it. So there are so many people out there right now that are doing such interesting things. It was like, it's so interesting because I will be 52 this year. And when I was a kid, I remember just thinking there were teachers, there were lawyers there were doctors. It was just like the world was so simple or simplistic in my mind. And now it's like, oh my gosh, there's so many variations of every single color. And not only that, but you can switch it up anytime you want. (laughs) And that's what I love about this is because, you know, I've gotten a handful of certifications throughout my journey, but I even think that is where we take what resonates with us and make it our own. And that's why I do love Dr. Kim is because she says that all the time. Like, take what I tell you and make it your own, your your own unique expression. We've put ourselves into a box for far too long. It's not going to work anymore. The boxes are pressure cookers at this point. We're just going to feel it at a very, very deep level, even if it can be kind of sneaky too. So it's really just learning to tune into your truth. And when, again, when something's in alignment for you, to me, there's also a difference between, is this just outside my comfort zone? Is this just something I'm a little afraid of? Like maybe hopping on a Facebook live or, you know, doing your first podcast episode or something of that nature, but you're like, oh, I really want to do it. I'm just a little afraid. Or is this something that is actually a no? Or is this something that is actually a yes? It's using that discernment and learning to navigate when you feel out of alignment versus when you feel in alignment. Because to me, it's like, that's our highest expression is that energy and energetic of that heart and soul, full body, yes, alignment. Like I love that term, full body, yes. You know, and people also want to point this out too, because I'm probably kind of speaking from my lens a little bit because I feel things so deeply in my body. For some people, they talk about all the different clairs and ways we sense things. So maybe you kind of um, have that expression where you see things or you hear things. So, you know, really tuning into your own unique way that you show up and, and process energy and process, you know, what your truth is. Yeah. And I would just remind everybody to always just take a really deep breath because they say the only difference between excitement and fear is breath. Like like there's Mm. a very similar sensation going on in your body, but sometimes fear can actually point in the right direction of something that you're supposed to do, right? And then just take a deep breath and go, oh, okay. You know, how do I feel there? And I love